A few months ago, we met the CEO of Kinesis Limited, and we spoke about cryptocurrencies in general, and some about Kinesis itself. But today, we focus and do a deeper dive on what is Kinesis. And for the help, we are joined not from London like last time, but we have Tom Coughlin, the CEO, to uh, right here in our studio. Tom, welcome. Thank you very much, Bart. Thanks for having me back again. So uh, let's talk about this. It, you know, Kinesis, it's more than just a cryptocurrency, right? It's more of a currency system and, and actually sort of a banking system. So uh, explain it for our viewers. Sort of encompasses all those elements. It's a full monetary system, actually. We're focused in on being like fair and honest and it's secure, efficient and rewarding. And um, really for the benefit of all, both collectively and individually. So how does it, how does it actually work? Give it, walk us through it. Sure, well, we have a highly unique sort of two tier market structure, if you call it that. Um, so the top tier is the primary market and the second tier is the blockchain. And um, basically the primary market is where the average person, the average uh, mum or pop can actually go and mint or create their own money. So the average person can be their own like central bank effectively. Is minting different than mining? You're just minting it because it's gold? It, it is a little bit different because the, the gold's already above ground, it's already there, so it's just like really a conversion between like another currency, be it fiat currency, US dollar, and a conversion into basically gold currency. And it's something real, it's something real you can touch and feel as opposed to some, a crypto that you would mine, which is based upon, I guess, computing power and, and, and time at the computer. The, uh, the, uh, Kinesis is based upon something you can touch and feel, in, in this case, gold, and so you mint the you mint the, uh, the gold, the Kinesis coins, and then what happens? It's uh, emitted into the secondary market, which is the blockchain. And this is like a highly efficient rail system. So, I mean, we're focused in on what makes money successful. And we're talking about gold. It's the greatest store of value that the world's ever seen, ultimately. You know, valued by human civilizations for thousands of years and held its value over time. So, and in the case of cryptocurrencies, um, it's a new experiment. But we're backing it by something that has a proven track record. So then it's emitted into the blockchain and that's a highly efficient rail system. So that's where we make it an efficient medium of exchange ultimately to be able to transmit or transfer value between different parties within the blockchain system. Now, uh, the, the, the folks that are involved in cryptos, and I am too, and I think they have lots of attributes, and the main thing is that I talk about is how it's decentralized, and so it's not necessarily held by the powers that be. Not that I'm opposed to the powers that be, but I like the fact that the money and currencies get out there. What other sorts of problems is Kinesis trying to address in the current uh, financial system? Yes, yeah, certainly. So, I mean, we address problems across different sectors. Um, I mean, one of the sectors is the banking sector. So, I mean, I go put money in the bank. I'm, I'm actually uh, giving the money, the bank, like transferring title of my money to that bank. And so I'm holding counterparty risk against that bank. Yeah, sure, in different, you know, regions around the world, it's insured, deposits are insured up to a certain level, etc. But there's also a lot of other scary provisions like bail-in uh, provisions and this and that. And there's a lot of scary things like what happened in Cyprus as well with haircuts on depositors and stuff like that. So, I mean, in a decentralised system such as ours, um, like the gold is actually, and the, well, the gold and silver currency is held in title is allocated to the ultimate beneficial owner, so the end user ultimately. So you're not holding counterparty risk. In addition, uh, our, uh, to transfer like, value between different parties is a lot more efficient from a speed, speed perspective. Like, for with us, it's two to three seconds anywhere in the world. Um, also from a cost perspective, we're much more cost efficient. In our case, it's only 0.45, but if you want to transfer cash, say with Western Union, it can be anywhere up to 25%, or quite typically 5 to 10%. Uh, the, the fee for transferring. That's correct. But, and but, same but, but what did you say yours was? Ours is 0 0.45. So, so. so minuscule compared to that. And, and when people, you talk about people taking title uh, after they mint a coin, but uh, is, the, is the, the gold, uh, are you storing gold or is it warrants on gold that are held in uh, places around the world? How does that work? The bullion, no, yes. So at all times um, it's held, the title is held by the end user the ultimate beneficial owner. It never sits on our balance sheet, never That's sits on different, our balance sheet. by the way, for a lot of our, some of our viewers you may not know, if you're trading on a, a, a cryptocurrency exchange, a lot of times they, because of transferability, they, the exchange, are actually holding the title and you have what amounts to a warrant, but 
the title is with the exchange. You don't actually hold the, it's not cha changing uh, in the blockchain onto your hand. Uh, so you, this is this is a, an attribute that Kinesis is addressing? A hundred percent, yes. I mean, and that's why crypto exchanges get hacked because their treasury account or whatever, their house account gets hacked and next thing, all the, you know, the depositors' coins are gone. That doesn't happen with It reminds me of that old famous quote of John Dillinger, the famous bank robber in Chicago. You know, why do you rob banks? He said, that's where the money is. Why do, you, why do you hack crypto exchanges? That's where the blockchain is. That's where the money is. Well, let me ask you, uh, I mean, we've seen a accounting problems, speaking about problems and hacks, et cetera, uh, recently, and we have seen hacks, but how are you going to be set up with accountants and making sure that everything is done okay, and how are you going to protect yourself against these uh, gosh awful hacks? Sure. So there's really sort of two aspects to this with, with us. So we have basically the, the way that title is formed and transferred um, through our like digital currency. Uh, um, through like the net or through like smartphones, etc. Now that's all like transparent, distributed ledger technology, and you can see it um, basically on the blockchain. And so, I mean, that's something very transparent. Who else is out there in this sort of space, looking at uh, a physical like gold or silver and doing crypto with it? There's there's a number of other different parties. One of the first um, in the market were Digix. I mean, uh, but look, in, in the case of a lot of these different parties, we don't really have competition with everything we do. I mean, we... we the, the crypto part is... The, the, the cryptocurrency part is one, yeah. but when you talk about a monetary system, that's about, unique to Kinesis. That's, that's correct. I mean, we have a full closed-loop monetary system with a primary, secondary market, with a crypto exchange, with a primary uh, exchange at the top, uh, with a mobile banking sector. Um, uh, component and also um, like a, a we call it a, the Kinesis Commercial Center as well, which links into merchants and everything like that. And it's full closed loop. In the in the case of some of these others, like say for example, gold money, it's a central centralized platform. In addition to that, we solve things that gold money haven't been able to solve, which is like Gresham's law: bad money gr drives out good. By actually incentivizing the money to move, we incentivize participation in the system. We're the only monetary system in the world where people get a benefit by actually spending their money and in perpetuity. So if you spend $1,000 within our system, um, then you actually receive a benefit on that $1,000 that you spend in perpetuity forever. You keep on receiving a portion of the transaction fees in the entire system. So, so instead of a, a, a traditional uh, bank uh, getting a transaction fee when you use your ATM or, or something, uh, you are getting a large portion of that fee right back. That's, that's right. Yeah. And this is something that's really held back, like asset-backed currencies. In the case of you know gold and silver being remonetized, it's really held them back because I mean ultimately they're hoard for people who wish to make the transaction and convert a fiat currency into say gold. A lot of them don't wish to actually use gold as a transactional currency, so we've looked to really combat that problem and really incentivize for the gold to actually be used as a transactional currency. So when presented with an option, OK, I spend my 20 US dollars now, or I can spend $20 worth of Kinesis, but I actually receive uh, a benefit in perpetuity on Kinesis, I'm going to choose Kinesis. So that's how we put it into motion. It's essentially like a rebate on your use. Now, are the, the, the Kinesis tokens, are those the velocity tokens that, that I've read about, or are the Kinesis velocity tokens? So they are correct. And, and what sort of value would they have? I mean, uh, we, when you when you talk, I know you're talking in the aggregate about uh, gold holding value for thousands of years, but it hadn't done so well in the last couple of months. Uh, yeah. It was at a, at a at least a year low not too long ago. Um, you know, where are we on the what would the value of a velocity, a Kinesis velocity token equal the value of an ounce of gold? No, what, what this actually is, and I need to make a disclaimer first, that these are only available to accredited investors in the US. So in the case of the Kinesis Velocity token, whoever buys into these is buying into 20% of the revenue of the entire monetary system. So as you can imagine, a monetary system's uh, a business with pretty big bones. Yeah. And um, if, we, if we follow through with our, uh, with our vision, mission, and our aspirations, then it's going to be quite a large business ultimately. We're getting really good traction. So yeah, that's, uh, investors in that like, basically get a, um, um, a share of 20% of all the transaction fees 
of the entire system. So it's worthwhile looking it up and doing their own research and seeing whether it's a, a worthwhile investment for them. So where, where, when you do your launch, is this, is this going to be targeting investors in the EU or in Asia? Are you going to go after some institutional investors in the, the US? What's that about? Certainly, yeah. Yeah, I've got uh, two weeks of back-to-back uh, <laughs> -back meetings here in the US with institutional investors. That's why I'm here now and also to meet you. Um, but um, yeah, all, all around the world, like there are some limitations, obviously, as I mentioned, like some might meet it, need to be accredited investors or sophisticated and wealthy investors, that sort of thing. In many, in many countries, no, that's not the case. But yeah, the, welcome to inquire and, and we'll give answers based on all of our legal. Uh, and how are you dealing with, uh, I mean, this, you know, uh, as a former regulator, I'd like to think, look, I'm, you know, want to be accommodating, but, you know, we certainly nobody wants anybody to be ripped off uh, in this space. And there's been so many bad examples of, you know, cryptos that went bust, et cetera. Uh, how are you dealing? But it's, so it's very expensive to deal with the regulatory aspect. How are you dealing with that uh, here or in, in the EU or UK? Well, we have a, a bit of an advantage over other, like, cryptocurrency startups, put it that way, because... Kinesis has been born out of uh, an established organisation, um, Allocated Bullion Exchange, which was founded in 2011. Basically, it's a full institutional exchange for spot physical precious metals, gold, silver and platinum, and with an unblemished track record. And we have some of the largest entities in the precious metal space plugged into us and trading with us. So, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot at stake. We're not in the business of trying to do anything nefarious or anything like that. Like, of course not. Yeah, yeah. And I wasn't suggesting that. I was just saying it's really expensive to do the right thing sometimes, and and that's why I think there's so many bad actors out there is because it's so expensive and takes a long time. And you know, uh, people are like, uh, do we get the product out there, uh, whether or not it's a crypto area or something else, or do we, you know, uh, dot all our eyes and cross all our t's? And you know, what's the risk reward of have the regulators come on us? So um, anyway, well, it sounds like you're doing everything right. That's Thomas Coughlin, the C. CEO of Kinesis Limited. Thank you very much, so Bob. Good to be with you in person. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah, likewise. Thank you. And that's it for this time. You can catch Boom Bust on YouTube at youtube.com slash boombustrt. We'll catch you next time. So long.